Oh, big jump. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I am starting another reading vlog. Um, I know I'm in the same spot, same sweater, please don't judge me, but this morning we did go on a really nice hike, um, got outside, and now we are heading out for um, a little brunch place and hopefully to stop in a bookstore as well. So I wanted to start the vlog here. Um, I finished one book this morning and my next one is um, Blueberries I plan on starting. Um, Rebecca really convinced the entire internet that this is one that needs to be read and I believe her. Ben read it, said it was also incredible. Two people that I trust. Um, so I'm really, really excited to read this. I've heard really only incredible things that it's kind of a must read. So um, yes, and I just wanted to kind of start the vlog here. Hopefully get some cute little bookstore shots. Um, Yes, thank you so much for watching. Okay, hi everyone. So it is a few days later. Um, I wasn't able to kind of check in because I had kind of both my jobs back to back on Monday and Tuesday, so it's now Wednesday. But I've been reading Blueberries. I know I haven't checked in like at all, but um, I'm very, very close to being done. And now it's like I have so much to talk about that I don't know where to start. Um, so first off, if you don't know, Blueberries by Elena Savage is like a collection of essays, um, short stories, poems, that all kind of comprise her memoir, which I think is a really, really interesting way to write a memoir. So I'm, first off, just enjoying that. Um, so you can kind of read all of those little bits. They hold up as like separate standalone pieces. Um, there are some that I've marked as just being like some of the best short stories I've read. Um, but like it is kind of nice, usually with a short story collection, I might like read a few, put it down, kind of read something else. But this one, I think it is kind of important to read it all as like a unit because it is telling this woman's story. Um, all little bits and pieces of her story kind of on all different topics um, that kind of make up her life. This book, kind of the whole thing, as far as I've kind of gotten to, which is almost to the end, it's all about memory, personhood, um, womanhood creating. She's a writer so she's kind of talking a lot about the process of writing and what that's kind of made her life look like as a writer. Um, she's kind of talking about roots, the kind of the roots that you sit down, the roots that have kind of been laid out for you by you know, your ancestors. Um, she's talking about relationships and heartbreak and her relationship to traumas that have happened to her and kind of the legacy of those traumas. Um, like for example the first story which has been one of my favorites. It's the first one of the collection. It's kind of one that I've kept thinking about, um, and that is Yellow City. So it's about um, when she was in Lisbon, um, two men assaulted her and attempted to rape her. Um, and she goes back to Lisbon 11 years later with her partner as um, kind of a way to... She had to leave Lisbon before she kind of got through the whole trial and got all the answers and kind of saw what happened to the two men. Um, so she goes back there in search of the paperwork to see how the, her case was talked about at the time, um, 
and also I think to kind of like test her own memory and her own relationship to the event. Um, so much of that first story, and that kind of continues throughout the book, but so much of the first story is really about her relationship to that memory and what she's kind of, the bits and pieces that she's had to detach from that event just to kind of be able to live day by day, um, to kind of survive. Um, but then also about the moments that she hasn't been able to escape that are visceral, but she does kind of question herself about what details am I forgetting or have I misremembered as a way to try to cope and survive. Um, so it's all about trauma, really. Um, kind of in my house we call it big T's and little T's. Um, kind of the big T's, the big traumas are ones that your life is kind of like before this event and after this event. And then kind of those little T's are maybe ones that in the moment or even like the immediate aftermath you didn't realize affected you or how deeply they affected you and then maybe as an adult you can look back and be like wow that really wasn't okay or actually that really kind of affected me. Um, so that's kind of off tangent but um, kind of what I'm getting a little bit from this that the trauma was one thing but kind of the living with the trauma is another um, and kind of yeah her memory of these events and how she defines it to herself um, and then kind of how she defines herself um, that's you know all about what a memoir is um, so I loved that story and then I have kind of marked in the front there hasn't been a story or a essay or anything that I haven't loved but there are some that have kind of really really spoken to me um, so that was Yellow City the first story and then um, Unwed Teen Mom Mary um, 107 I thought was incredible um, this one's all about womanhood, it's about her relationship to her body and kind of um, talking about how she had an abortion when she was younger and um, kind of, not how it affected her, but how it, the lack of effect it had on her is maybe the way to say it. Um, kind of, here's a, a few moments that I underlined and marked. Um, the narrative of inevitable future shame and regret post-abortion, as though a feeling of regret is worse than a lifetime of poverty, poverty, or being eternally tethered to a man you hate, or being dependent for years on a biological family you wish to be separate from, or simply being forced to do something you instinctively did not want to do. Um, because this is what agency is. It is doing what you can do with the circumstances you are dealt. Um, but then a part that I thought was super incredible, she's talking about motherhood is not holy um, and kind of about how we talk in like the um, realm of Christianity and kind of the culture around that, um, this kind of idolizing of motherhood. So got so excited because as you know, I just read Sheila Hetty's Motherhood and she, um, Savage does give a shout out to that. She's talking about... Um, Sheila Hetty writes that the hardest thing for a woman to do is to choose to not become a mother. Um, if you've seen my blog or my wrap up, I absolutely love Sheila Hetty's motherhood, so just to see her kind of mentioned in this, and it really does talk a lot about the same ideas, um, I just thought it was so, so beautiful. Um, really powerful as well. And then, what else have I kind of marked? Um, and she does talk a lot about like her mental health, um, and what I thought was really interesting the short story called, or the essay called Houses, um, kind of all about, as a writer and um, kind of this independent woman, she's almost detached herself or avoided, maybe is the, the better word, avoided setting down roots. Um, she kind of talks about as a child, her family moved so, so often. They were always kind of starting over and packing up and, and moving. Um, and now as um, a grown woman, she's kind of talking about her relationship with her current partner and kind of the roots there and how that's something that really scares her but also about how she's kind of been this nomad as well and um, moving from apartment to apartment house to house kind of never really setting down roots um, and then what I kind of thought was so so beautiful let me try to find it um, where is it talking about um, that roots don't have to be a place and kind of and maybe knowing this might make it imaginable for me now to find a kind of home that is rich and interior and not connected to buildings or wealth or authorized belonging. I'm kind of realizing that her body is her home. Um, and she kind of talks about her ancestors and kind of reflecting back on the loss of her grandparents and kind of what that kind of conjured up in her. Um, and kind of all the thoughts that come with whether you kind of had this very close relationship with your grandparents or not, kind of that loss of legacy and that kind of your immediate direct loss to um, your past um, and how that kind of really shook her and rocked her but that 
she's kind of noticing that she's always had roots and that the kind of the people around her um, are her roots and that, you know, she doesn't need to have one specific um, place in the world. Um, I just am loving this. I, I'm going to finish it in the next few minutes. Um, I just wanted to check it before I totally finished it because otherwise what is a reading book? Um, I just, this book really like the writing is like like magic. I, I know it sounds silly but um, it is kind of obviously a collection of essays and poems and you know that she like absolutely went through everything and, and made it she's like so well crafted right like no word no sentence no um, line is misplaced every single word is there for a very specific reason um, but still like kind of the reading of it it's not it doesn't read formulaic and it's still so so enjoyable to read um, but every single word kind of packs that punch and is there for a larger reason yeah kind of talking about as a younger woman and now um, even in like her current times um, kind of I was paralyzed by the truth of my not being any of the people I long to be um, so there are elements of when you know you're reading a memoir there are kind of especially as a woman kind of struggling to kind of find connections and find meaning to her life and she's like really interrogating all the constructs around her but also like her own memories and her own life and kind of trying to condense all these huge moments and even these little moments into like one kind of little package to sell to the world um, that's like so much to kind of fathom but I do think that you know to go through this there really are so many things that I've um, really connected to and really responded to um, there are a lot of things that I've never experienced but just kind of the things that are more like universal truths but that um, she kind of puts um, like words to paper and such like in such a way that you're like, oh my god, like, yes, like, I've, I've really felt that way, right here, oh my god, okay, um, and they say, it can only suggest that sadness is not always a terrible illness, sadness is perhaps the most honest response to living, like, and I just think that this is so, so brilliant, because she's kind of acknowledging as she's writing that her memory will not always, um, or that her memory has the potential to really fail her, um, but that this way, she's kind of creating like almost like a time capsule um, so she's not going to lose the moments that she does have and that she can kind of reflect and ponder on the ones that maybe aren't completely perfectly factual and that there have been like you know holes filled with information that might not be 100% true or um, representative of what really happened but that this is her memory of it and that like what she kind of how she processed something and how she remembers something um, is, is the truth to her and is, you know, her reality um, and kind of how she's living with that. So I just, I'm loving this book. Um, I'm sorry that I'm, this reading vlog has been like kind of chaotic and that I haven't really done proper check-ins and hopefully I will finish this very, very soon and then give you final thoughts. Okay, friends. Just finished blueberries. So, five out of five out of five out of five out of five. This book was fucking phenomenal. Um, so, the ending, the last, like, little page or two of her last essay, yes, she's kind of talks about how she's been having these notes for so, so long, and to do what with them, and that this is kind of the body of art that she wanted to kind of create, um, so basically, um, to kind of capture her moments, her vision, um, but every image, every pop song, every name uttered, every dense night, and every morning the warm skin beside you before the day collapses inward. All of it, every shade of the light, gone. Like, spectacular. And also just like, she did it because she wanted to, and like, here it is, so like, fuck off, Joyce Carol Oates, like, actually. And like, her, her life story is a story worthy of being told, so like, I loved it loved it yes that is like really all I have to say about this um yeah I just please please read this book okay hi so I'm here to wrap up this mishmash of a reading vlog um I'm sorry that I didn't check in as often as was as I would have liked um for blueberries but I just didn't have the time um I loved it um cannot recommend it enough it was a really really incredible memoir um, really creative um, and introspective and witty and smart and sad um, yeah it kind of did it all it really she really explored every angle of her life um, so yes I loved it 
super glad I read it. And then I did forget to mention that, um, that, that bookstore that I went to over the weekend, I did get just one, one book, um, and that's Ally Smith's Summer, or, nope, Ally Smith's Spring is the one that I got. Um, so this is, um, one of the books in Ally Smith's Seasonal Quartet series. Um, I don't know too much about it. Uh, obviously it's gotten a lot of really incredible reviews. I don't know specifically if this one has gotten good reviews, but I know that the whole quartet, the whole series, has really um, been praised. The synopsis is very strange. It just says, Spring, The Great Connective, What Unites Catherine Mansfield, Charlie Chaplin, Shakespeare, Reich, Beethoven, Brexit, The Present, The Past, The North, The South, The East, The West, A Man Mourning, Lost Times, A Woman Trapped in Modern Times. Spring. So, <laughs> I don't know too much of what this book is. Um, yes, I'm just really excited to read it, so... I don't know if this will be my next read. I feel like I need something kind of plotty, kind of like a quick plotty book. I feel like I've read, um, obviously, Blueberries, and before that I read a short story collection, so I just kind of want something plotty, quick, fast. Um, but I am very excited about this, and then if I enjoy this, I will um, get the other three in the series. Um, so yes, please let me know your thoughts if you've read Spring or any of the other ones. I know, obviously, Summer just came out and has been... Um, put up for the women's prize, so yes, I'm just looking forward to reading this. Um, so if you have made it this far in this messy vlog, thank you so much for watching. Um, please let me know if you've read Blueberries or if you're just excited to read it. I would love to chat about it. That book is has like so, so many ideas and kind of a really slim book, so a lot to kind of unpack. I would love to chat, <laughs> chat about it. Um, but yes, thank you so much for watching. I really, truly appreciate it. Please subscribe if you haven't already, if you feel so inclined, and hopefully I will be doing another reading vlog soon that's a little bit more thought through, but no promises on that end. Um, yes, thank you so much. Bye, everyone.